All right. Uh, I want to talk about this one um, at maybe some personal risk. I, I, can, I consider the CIA as the central node of the shadow government because of its unbridled, unconstitutional power, which it has. Unbelievable amount of power with no congressional oversight. They say there is, but there ain't at all. It, it manipulates the other intelligence branches. The director of national security was supposed to stop that. I can tell you he doesn't. The CIA still is manipulating these people, these agencies. It controls multiple defense intelligence corporations, which I've talked about. It manipulates the president and his political decisions. Remember false intelligence that led us into Iraq and the death of 500,000 Iraqi citizens and 5,000 troops and 200,000 American troops that were injured on top of that based on false intelligence, which most of us are convinced was intentional. Power to start wars, torture, drones. They've conducted 80 coups overseas, multiple false flags, false terrorist attacks in Italy conducted by the CIA to make it look like the Italian government did it. Killed 491 innocent people. It was a CIA false op made to look like a terrorist attack. Google it. It's in the history books. They did it. I have a friend, Paul Williams. I'll put a plug in. He wrote a book called uh, Operation Gladio, The Unholy Alliance. Uh, the connection between the, uh, the CIA, the mafia, and the Vatican. The CIA used the mafia to run drugs, and they laundered the money through the Vatican. Uh, Paul's book, I endorsed it. I wasn't until I read it. He's got 2,000 documented footnotes in that book that proves that that happened, that the CIA was running drugs, laundering the money through the Vatican to stage false terrorist attacks in Italy. They were doing it. It's documented. And it gets worse. These are unelected officials that make these massive, huge decisions. It manipulates Congress with secrecy. I'll show you how they do that. They manipulate Congress with impunity by the power of secrecy. And I'll show you how they do that. They manipulate the judiciary with the state secret privilege, shutting cases down, forcing them to shut cases down. And surprisingly, their budget was, is secret because if anybody knew what they're spending this money on, there would be no CIA. I can tell you that right now. It would be gone. But see, that's what secrecy does. It hides dark activity. Otherwise, it wouldn't exist. It has been calculated, I think pretty accurately, that because of CIA operations and coups, about 7 million people have died as a result of CIA covert operations. Largely innocent people. Places like Chile, where they supported Augusto Pinochet and the death squads, cost the lives of 46,000 men, women, and children. Some of the, some of the ladies were pregnant. And 200,000 Chileans disappeared. They don't know where they went. That was a CIA-supported coup. And they actually paid some of Pinochet's uh, death squads uh, with our tax dollars. It kind of makes you, it upsets you a little bit. All right. This is a quote. I have this in my book from Harry Truman. Harry Truman reluctantly created the Central Intelligence Agency. He said this afterwards. I think it was two years later. There's something about the way the CIA has been functioning that is casting a shadow on our historic position of freedom, and I think we need to correct it. Later, he called it a sinister and mysterious agency and then said he regretted ever forming it in the first place. That was only two years after its creation. It had gone rogue already. Well, and I'll show you some of that uh, in, in a bit. Interesting enough, remember I mentioned the Council on Foreign Relations and its connection to the mainstream media, specifically the Washington Post? Uh, still the Washington Post, in my humble view? Amazon just entered into a $600 million contract with, guess who, the CIA? Who does Amazon own? The Washington Post. What a coincidence. Uh, nothing ever changes. This is a cycle. This is a system. Anyway, this was published in the Washington Post. Everybody freaked out, and then it was deleted three days later, never published again. The Post pulled it. Somebody happened to grab it before they were able to do that. All right. What is going on in Washington, D.C. right now? Does it appear like there's a war, maybe? of some kind happening. It's like, you know, when there's a thunderstorm, when the cold air hits the hot air, boom, there's a thunderstorm. You've got the shadow government hitting this out of the box guy, Donald Trump, who's not a part of, by, uh, I think it was Newt Gingrich said, he's not a part of any of the secret societies. You've got the shadow government and the CIA and Donald Trump. Whatever you think of Donald Trump is irrelevant. They're colliding. And there is a thunderstorm. In, I, I, in all my 20 years of government, I never saw anything in, even remotely close to this. So there's an internal Cold War, the shadow government versus the elected government. The C Remember what the, some of the things Donald Trump said before the election? 
He's going to go on and, and investigate the CIA and some of their past activities. He's going to look at the JFK assassination. He wasn't so convinced that 9-11 was above board. He wanted to look into the NSA domestic spying program. All these things he was saying before he was elected. And of course, everybody's like, he'll never get in. Hey, go ahead, blow your smoke. Then he gets elected. And the shadow government is like, Homer Simpson, don't. Oh, my. What are we, what are we going to do? I mean, they're, they're freaking out, literally. And, and you can see that coming out in the press. This is the size of the shadow government. Huge complex of secrecy, surveillance, and covert programs the size of 23 U.S. Capitol buildings, three Pentagons, and if you remember this, the CIA just recently, a couple years ago, spied on the U.S. Senate. They cracked into the Senate computers, surveilled them. When they, they were writing, uh, Dianne Feinstein and the Select Committee were writing the report on CIA torture program. Remember that? The CIA actually broke into the, C into the Senate computers on Capitol Hill and accessed that report. That's a felony. That's, a, that, that's multiple felonies. Uh, was anybody charged for that? Was John Brennan indicted for doing that? Did he even get a slap on the wrist? No. Nothing happened. Now, President Obama, they said, uh, President Obama, what do you think about this? The, the CIA just hacked into the Senate on Capitol Hill. Now that, what are you going to do about this? He said, well, I have all full confidence in John Brennan was his response. But most people think, well, that was a political backup. No. The chilling thing is President Obama could do nothing about what the CIA was doing. Obama could do nothing about the fact that the CIA had cracked into the Senate. So he just said, I support John Brennan. And he, he, there's nothing he could do. He did not have the power to, to over, overturn or subvert the CIA. That's how bad this is. Okay? So what does John Brennan do when he's called before the Senate and put on the hot seat for bugging the U.S. Senate? What, this is what the CIA always does. He threatens them. Well, you had unauthorized access to CIA classified information on those computers, is what he said. And you, you know what the penalties of that are? Could be prison. So you, you're saying I spied on the Senate. Well, I'm telling you, you had unauthorized access to CIA documents, and you could go to prison for it. That was his comeback. And I know, because I was in there, that is their MO. They always do that. That's how the, the shadow government works. But that is actually what he did. He threatened the Senate with prosecution for accessing, accessing CIA shadow government documents. Outrageous. Secrecy, and I, I'd like everybody to remember this, secrecy outside constitutional uh, constraints, con corruption and failure are inevitable. Government itself is going to go bad every time. That's one of the genius things the Founding Fathers knew after all the research and history they looked at. Government will go bad every time. People in powerful positions of government will go bad every time. Secret government goes really bad <laughs> over time because there's no accountability. You take anybody with no scruples or ethics, or some sort of uh, accountability, they're going to go bad. It's human nature. This is some of the, the corruption that's happened because of secrecy. Do you remember Pearl Harbor? Now, they said, we're creating the CIA because we don't want another Pearl Harbor. You've probably heard that before. Did you know that FDR had received hard intelligence that the Japanese were going to attack Pearl Harbor? Before it happened, he removed the defensive ships from Pearl Harbor that could have stopped that attack held the in intelligence along with Winston Churchill and allowed that attack to happen. Now, if you don't believe that, I have an intelligence hour program where I, bought, where I brought uh, retired uh, Admiral Ace Lyons on, former commander of the Pacific Fleet, interviewed Ace on this, and he said, bullseye. That's exactly what FDR did. So we got this right out of the horse's mouth. So even the creation of the CIA is based on a fallacy. They could have prevented Pearl Harbor. 2,700 Americans, I think, uh, something like that, died in Pearl Harbor. And they went into a war that probably was unnecessary. I understand the Japanese, according to Ace, uh, Admiral Lyons, Japanese tried to surrender, I think, five times, and it was ignored. And they, and they pushed the war forward anyway. Uh, Pearl Harbor was a myth. Iran. The, the Iran we have now was started when the CIA, the Iranian government accepted by the people, it was, it was a peaceful government, uh, almost, almost an ally, but the Iran took control of all of the oil and gas pipelines in the country of Iran, which was a lot, and uh, took it away from the British and away from the Americans and nationalized the oil system in Iran. So the CIA, along with some of the U.S. corporations, said, no, 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 we cannot have the Iran having power over this oil. So the CIA went into Iran, staged a coup, got, got uh, riots in the streets, people were killed. That government was overthrown, and guess who replaced it? Ayatollah Khomeini 
and the creation of Hezbollah took its place. And now, what do we have now? The Iran and the nuclear deal was started with a CIA coup in the beginning over a government that was not trying to hurt anybody, started with a, with, a, with a coup that removed a peaceful government to get the oil and the gas. Research it. It's there. And the CIA created the problem we have with Iran right now because of an illegal, unconstitutional operation. Afghanistan. We went into Afghanistan against the Soviets. Remember that? Uh, that was back in my days. And uh, we taught the Mujahideen radical Islamic cells. We taught them how to blow up cars, how to build bombs, how to shoot missiles, stingers, and the whole shebang. Taught them all that stuff. And after the Soviets pulled out, uh, do you think um, the Mujahideen stayed uh, faithful to the United States? No, that's not who they are. What happened? They created ISIS, and they, well, originally they created Al-Qaeda, which morphed into ISIS, but out of Afghanistan, the Mujahideen, once the U.S. had pulled out, created Al-Qaeda, came back around, boom, and became our enemy. Started by a CIA operation that, back, in, in, in intelligence circles, we call that blowback. When you do an operation thinking that you're a real big dog, and then it all goes wrong and comes back the exact opposite way, that's pretty much the history of the CIA, if you read, read through some of these operations. Essentially, the CIA is responsible for the creation of Al-Qaeda, that is not an understatement, okay? The fall of the Soviet Union, I was there. It was a complete surprise to the CIA. The CIA had, had it was a, they had no idea the Soviet Union was about to fall. This is the, is the most powerful intelligence agency of the world. The top of the evolutionary heap is what we th thought of ourselves. Uh, the, above the little people. Uh, and when you get that kind of arrogant, narcissistic mindset, you start doing stupid things. So when the Soviet Union fell, the CIA was like, oh, duh, what just happened? They had no idea. They completely missed it. Iraq. The CIA, many people think it was intentional because they had a vendetta against Iraq, provided false intelligence to the President of the United States that led us to one of the worst military moves in United States history. Then we have Libya. We ran guns into Libya. We didn't like Muammar Gaddafi, although he was giving us intelligence on Al-Qaeda. He destroyed his weapons of mass destruction. He told us, hey, if you want to take over Libya, I'll move into a safe haven country. If you want, I'll get out of there. I'll do any, anything you want. But Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton, and I'm not making a political statement, they, they committed what was a de facto assassination, and they pushed for his murder anyway to overturn that government, which is now in the hands of radical Islamists, largely Al-Qaeda and Al-Fuqa and others have taken control of Libya and it is an absolute mess and we've lost total control and it is now connected to ISIS and the Free Syrian Army up in Syria. Another mess. 9-11. Don't have time to go off on this one, but I can tell you this, the CIA had direct information before 9-11 uh, of the alleged hijackers because they were assets. They knew who they were, but they refused to provide the information to the FBI. After 9-11 happened, they were the only federal agency to refuse to provide any information about what the CIA knew before the attack. Just flat out refused. Said, nope, not going to do it. It's classified. And 9-11, the 9-11 Commission was never able to put that in the report. Uh, we could spend a few hours on that one. There have been massive intelligence failures within the CIA. You, you would laugh if, if, you, if you knew what they were. Massive intelligence failures that people will never know about because uh, they're secret. If they did know about them, the place wouldn't exist. Uh, so there's a lot of failures that people don't know about because it's a classified complex. So corruption and failure are in inevitable whenever there is a secret form of government. It is the nature of the beast. Not an understatement. Blood on its roots. When you have an organization whose roots are dark from the beginning over history, the roots usually supply the life to the tree and then eventually the fruit. And I just want to make this point. The CIA's past, human rights violations in Chile, 80 bloody coups, torture, rendition, and secret prisons were happening in the first four years of the CIA. Does that sound familiar? It just happened again, didn't they? Same root, same fruit. False flag terrorist attacks in Italy and more. Assassinations with impunity. Operation Phoenix in Vietnam. They killed, assassinated 26,000 people. The press never reported on because they were suspected of being connected, civilians, connected to the, the Vietnamese. A huge assassination program called Operation Phoenix. Collaborating with the enemy, Alan Dulles and the CIA secretly moved Nazi war criminals into the United States with false papers and made them scientists within, this, within the CIA working on behalf of the American government. High level uh, Nazi war criminals. Alan Dulles actually worked with top, the, the CIA director, worked with top Nazi officials. 
overthrowing democratic governments, which they've done many times, politically motivated intelligence leaks. Now, this is, this is the past. This is the first uh, 10 years of the CIA. Does any of this look familiar today? Blood on the fruit, on the root, blood on the fruit. Same organization, hasn't changed at all.